What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joining the Marsman crew to go over the top games of January and the start of the new year. We are kind of hitting off on a so so pacing with a, you know, after a crazy year of 2023, we've had so many different plethora of games. And seeing January kind of hit with not that many, but we do need to cover kind of the most important games that you should be looking out for because there are some really good ones that we really would highly recommend that you play. So when I'm looking at the total list, it's not a lot, but there are some that kind of caught my eye right off the, right off the bat. And I think when I think one of the key ones, I would say Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Prince of Persia obviously being one of the you know classic series, but they're coming back. Uh, I have Arklands. I have another code, Recollection, jumping on the Switch, January 19th. And Shrouded, which is based on all next-gen consoles uh, with PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC dropping January 24th. Um, then we have Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which is going on basically, basically all consoles. And it says January 26th is their official date of release. I think this is uh, another game a lot of people are really interested in. We have Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy, which is the second grouping of the trilogy that a lot of fans, including myself, have been itching for the kind of remastered version of these games. Um, we have Tekken 8, which is arriving on all next-gen consoles, January 26th as well. And then Rugby 24, which is dropping uh, on mo basically all game, game consoles except for the Switch on January 30th. And really, what I want us to do in this first part is kind of talk about really the games that we are most interested in playing. And I'm going to go first with Hockey. Were there any games you felt like on this list that you're like, hey, I got to play this game. And I'm ready. I'm just ready to go into it. So, are there any games on this list for you? Yeah. So I picked uh, Prince of Persia, and guys, this is a $50 game. When everyone's charging $70, this one comes in $20 less. So that immediately gives me, uh, you know, gets me a thumbs up. You know, you can go for a deluxe version, $60. It's going to get you a cosmetic skin as well as uh, an amulet that's going to help you find treasure around the map. Uh, I'm going to steer clear of all deluxe versions because I got absolutely scorched with the Battlefield deluxe version. I know Marsman did as well. Uh, but if you remember Sands of Time 2003, uh, Ubisoft's OG action adventure platforming game, it had puzzles throughout that you had to complete. I remember watching my brother play and then uh, I jumped into it as well and just absolutely fell in love. And it did have uh, very good success. There were sequels from 04 to 09. Uh, but we actually haven't seen one in 15 years. So it's been some time, uh, The Lost Crown coming out January 18th, and it seems like they're sticking to you know their roots, which I've always said, if you have a game or a series uh, that's successful, make sure you bring the core uh, to it. If you're gonna be bringing either another sequel or another game into that series, um, and <clears throat> this is what it's gonna be, an action platforming uh, adventure game. But there's gonna be a little bit of a twist supposedly it's going to be semi-open world as well uh, that's what the devs were saying so we're just going to have to see you know what the map design feels like through our playthrough but there should be some good exploring uh if it is going to be semi-open world the combat and the boss fights that i saw on youtube uh, via people that got early access looked very intriguing um, and there was one big thing for me 20 to 30 hours of gameplay um, for a Prince of Persia game, that is pretty significant. So it's going to have to have meaningful content, though, for that to mean anything. You know, if it's 20 or 30 hours and, you know, it's really not meaningful content that kind of sticks you sticks with you, um, then they're going to have a lot of, you know, Prince of Persia fans kind of pissed off. Um, <clears throat> and Ubisoft, the last, you know, couple games, at least the last um, Assassin's Creed or last couple Assassin's Creed has kind of been shaky. So um, it really depends on them coming out with a, you know, a, a pretty solid game with no bugs. Uh, but if they do that, I think this game is going to be very fun. And it being $50, like I mentioned before, is definitely a thumbs up. Yeah, I mean, uh, Prince of Persia is definitely one of those game series that have been lacking uh, with, with games coming out. So I'm, I'm actually really interested to see how they land when it comes to this reemergence of the game now for me I, I think like a dragon infinite wealth is probably going to be a really hyped game because a lot of people were really interested in the series obviously they've had multiple different games out there and when you look at look at like a dragon the it was a really different take on how the game is played i mean when you think of the older older versions of you know the yakuza games it was a lot of it was a lot of fighting just like kind of uh, button mashing beating up people around you but then like a dragon kind of took a right turn and said hey we're gonna go kind of like an rpg element and kind of take almost like uh turn based but you're kind of moving around and 
and you're attacking more like in, in, in Persona Tactics or even Mario Rabbids. And they actually came forward and said they revamped the combat system where it's actually closer to those games now where it's a lot more strategic in the amount of areas that you can attack based on the character you have or the build that you are. And I feel like that it does create kind of more of a, I guess you say a strategic way of playing it. Because it, first off, I gotta say the the writing is outrageous. It's funny. Like that's kind of part of the appeal for Infinite Wealth is that it's kind of like a your power ups are like, hey, you, you know, you're. They made it more about like your job occupation. Like, oh, you're a you're a, a dish cleaner. All of a sudden, now you have all these powers like a dish cleaner, and your ultimate's like a you know, get to hit someone with a, a bar of soap or something. Like it's just outrageously stupid, but at the same time, it's funny. Um, so this is kind of covering not only just those aspects, but expands upon it. And this is the first Yakuza game that ever took place outside of Japan. So this is actually in Hawaii, which is obviously a big change from all the other games before. And I think that what they do here is that they, they are actually also even going into two different characters perspectives, which I think is a really cool concept because now you're creating more intrigue about the story. And this is actually expanding upon some of the other lower aspects of the Yakuza game. So. I really think it does a good job or at least creating appeal for that. And I think what I also liked is that they expanded the amount of customizations that you have, whether it's through different job occupations that are way more advanced or bigger. They even created more mini games for you to play. But then on top of that, they created, if you're a fan of the Sims, they created a Sims like environment with an island where you can kind of customize it any way you want. And now granted, I don't necessarily think I'm going to be Mr. Sims over here, but at the end of the day, it, it's creating the variability of how you play and i think that's really the best part is that it was already a funny game last time it already was a lot of hours that you can play but now you're having all this and more i think this is definitely a game if you've had never tried you know like a dragon in the previous game i would definitely try it out i mean for me personally i i ended up i think getting like a dragon for i think christmas one year and i, I played it and i actually had a lot of fun playing it um and I remember I just really enjoyed the entire gameplay loop of it, especially because it was just funny. It was like a lot of like it was open world kind of it was funny. It was it was re relatively just easy to play, challenging at times, but at most of the time it was pretty straightforward. Um, but I, I would recommend try it out if you have never played like a dragon before. Uh, definitely a fun time. But Magella Kill, are there any games that you are interested in for uh, this month of January? Yeah, I mean, you guys covered two of them, um, but I'm going to give some quick notes on a couple other ones. Uh, other ones, excuse me. And Entrouded is one of them coming out on PC early access in January 24th. It comes out on console later this year at a, at a later date. Um, so PC gets it first at early access. This is a game made by Keen Games, a third-person survival action RPG, and it's a single-end co-op game of up to 16 players. Um, so this kind of reminded me, gave me a little bit of a reminder of Valheim um, with a bit of, bit of smoother uh, combat. And you're going to be traversing an open world. You're going to be doing parrying, fighting, using spells, fighting bosses, different enemies. There's a skill tree system. You can also do some crafting of weapons. Uh, you're doing settlement uh, development where NPCs can come and, uh, and uh, establish themselves um, at your settlement. So there's a lot that's going on here. And, you know, when you look at Valheim, right, when it came to the console, it was a little janky and it was a little slow. So I'm interested to see how this game performs. I thought the combat from what I saw was a little bit smoother. Now, it adds a little twist to it. There's something called a shroud fog, and there's going to be, like, important objects in these fogs, but you can't spend a lot of time in it. So this fog has kind of taken over the land, and you're going to have to maneuver at different times throughout this fog. is going to be very interesting. Another one, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy, Marsh, you brought it up. Switch, PC, and the consoles uh, on January 25th. This is a $50 game. Um, this is, has three games in one, so Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies, um, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney and Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. So three games in one, including the DLC episodes as well. So a lot jam packed in here. Anyone who follows the Mars Man Gaming channel knows we use Ace Attorney music quite a bit because um, we are big fans um, of this game. But I also like that they've added a little component that you can uh, select chapters to play. So um, you're allowed to add chapters. There's also a difficulty uh, adjuster that you can also do as well for fans that want to have a little less uh, tough time solving some of these cases. And finally, Tekken 8. And that comes out on uh, January 26th. Uh, Haki was talking about, you know, $50 games with a deluxe to 60. Well, this bad boy, $70 with three other, the deluxe, ultimate, and a collector's edition. Oh, my God. And a vast amount of cosmetics. But this is a game out coming out on Unreal Engine 5. 
It's using a, a new kind of gameplay mechanic called the heat system where you can uh, harness aggressiveness um, that leads to some special moves and enhanced abilities depending on your character. But a couple other things, 32 different fighters, guys. Um, it still includes rage arts and all the series' signature moves. So we had a really good uh, fighting game with Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. Here comes Tekken 8. Looked very good from the demos from what I saw. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when I'm... And I agree with you. Tekken 8 is definitely one of the it's a trio of uh, fighting games that ha everyone's been waiting to see. And I'm really wondering to see how Tekken 8 does perform compared to like you know, Street Fighter 6, in my opinion, was phenomenal. I played it thoroughly. Um, a lot of fun playing that game. Mortal Kombat also had really good numbers. Um, but all the other games you mentioned there, Linjilla Kill, I feel like Apollo Justice's Ace Attorney trilogy is going to be kind of the game I'm diving into. And I already told you guys, I'm already planning on doing an Ace Attorney kind of uh you know game to analyze the series as a whole when that game does come out because it, it is honestly a fantastic series and when you think about this the, this trilogy they're having dual destinies and spirit of justice are both actually considered to be tied for the highest rated on metacritic compared to the original ace attorney game um and 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 also tied with uh with you know with a great they, they're all kind of considered to be on the same level with each other and they're actually like Trials and Tribulations, like considered to be the best Ace Attorney game. They're all technically 81 on Metacritic, which is like, which is great. Now, the, what surprisingly to me was that the uh, Ace Attorney Origins is actually the highest of all the Ace Attorney games at 86, which, you know, is definitely a surprise to me because it's not the, it's be the same character or anything. Um, but one thing I will say is that I'm itching to play this trilogy because it kind of will culminate in the full story for me. I, I growing up, I always knew Ace Attorney games, but I never actually got to play them growing up. And I always was a big DS guy, Game Boy Advance guy. But all of a sudden now I start playing them later on in life. And I'm like, these games are phenomenal. Like I, I missed out on all these years of this. And I'm I, like, like Linjil Kill said, I uh, I use all these songs all the time. So, you know, I, they're all straight up jam. So I'm excited to play these games. I think it's going to be really fun, really, you know, great series to jump into. Um, but I feel like anyone else have anything else to say about these games? Because I feel like I, I'm excited for January, even though there's not a lot of games compared to other last year or, Jan or compared to 2023. But this, that has some solid ones. Yeah, I'll, I'll make one comment about Prince of Persia. When it first was announced, I was very hesitant, um, thinking that it might not be too good. Early signs have been pretty positive. Uh, Ubisoft. Um, it's had a bit of a struggle, but they can turn things around, putting a couple good back-to-back -back games. Uh, Avatar was not a bad uh, installment for them. Um, now, if Prince of Persia comes out pretty good, that's a pretty good back-to-back -back as uh, Ubisoft goes into the new year. But one thing I'll say is, if you are excited about any of the games we talked about, please let, let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.